everyone, I'm Rachel Poli with Ari Meglin and we're your hosts for the Merry Writer Podcast. We're on episode 64 and this week's question is, should you compare yourself to other writers? Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening so you never miss a show. And if you enjoy this episode, please give it a like. So should you compare yourself to other writers? The short answer is no. And we can just leave it at that. Podcast episode is over. Easiest episode, quickest episode, all done. Don't do it. It's bad for you. It's bad for your mental health. Just don't. This kind of a question, it's like, it's so obvious, but it's one of those questions that's easier said than done. It's so difficult not to see what other people are doing and then compare yourself to them. And I get it. Like, I feel it all the time, especially when I'm reading novels from my writer's group. I like they'll they'll comment on my piece and they'll give me constructive feedback and I try to do the same to them but I don't feel like I do as a good enough job because whenever I read somebody else's writing I just look at it as if it's way superior to my writing and I'm like wow those people like they're so much better at writing than I am what could I possibly say to them that would help them improve this like there's nothing to improve and the thing is, there's always something to improve. You just kind of need to, you know, look past that. Like every writer is different and we all have our own unique style. So one writer might be better at dialogue than you, but that doesn't necessarily make them a better writer. I'm going to be difficult. And I'm going to say you can compare yourself to other writers. Now, first of all, I'm Ooh, going to... have a devil's <laughs> advocate going on here. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. The, this isn't there. Definitely compare yourself to other writers. There's a caveat attached to this. It's You can't compare yourself to all other writers. Okay, let, let me try and explain <laughs> in a horrible, roundabout, messy way I'm going to. I try not to compare myself to other writers on the journey like I am. I try not to compare myself. And I say try because let's be honest, as Rachel said, we always compare. We just have to fight the instinct. I try not to compare myself to other writers on how they do things, how fast they write, how many books they've put out, how their marketing goes. Because in the end, we do not know what other people are doing, what's in their personal life, the help they've got, the experience they have. I've talked about this before, but I will always repeat myself if I have a good point. Now, who am I comparing myself to then? my favorite authors. I have a, a number of books that I love um, and it can be a mix of, of traditional published and um, indie authors but it's usually people who've got quite a lot of books out there and have obviously honed their skills really well to the point where like you know they're all like book eight and it's like wow I'm never gonna be this good. Now I will compare myself to them but not in a derogatory pulling myself down oh my god I'm so awful way I use them as a bar that's my bar that I'm aiming for I usually pick a couple of authors that are absolutely incredible whose worlds I just fall into the moment I open the book and I think that's the level I want to reach that is what I want I want the same I want to evoke the same emotions and the same sensation of immersion that these writers do. That's what I love. And I will compare myself, but not, not the same way. It's not like I hold myself up and go, oh my God, I'm so awful compared to this writer. It's where am I in my writing journey, in my skill compared to them? And then I work on it. I work on the descriptions because maybe their descriptions are way better or maybe their dialogue just flows and I'm looking at mine going, ooh, that's not good. And I will analyze their work. And this is not about copying. This is not about, you know, anything like that. It's about figuring out form and style and then using your own voice to kind of build your own form and style, but based off a stronger structure. That's what I'm talking about by comparing. And that is the only level of comparing with other writers that I am okay with. All right, now that, now that you have explained it, I do understand where you're coming from and I do agree with that. I think depending on the situation and the reason you're comparing yourself, well, you're not even really comparing yourself. You're just giving yourself a bar to reach, like you said. You're, yeah. You're going for a certain goal and you know, you're looking, you're looking up to these authors as mentors, 
even yes. though you're not, even though you're not even like talking to them, <laughs> you look up to them and you're aspiring to be similar to them, like in your own way, of course. When I said, no, you shouldn't compare yourself to other writers. I was thinking of the question in a like different light um, because for me personally, I do have that issue where I see other writers as journeys and I'm like, ah, man, like I should be at that point. I've been doing this for X amount of years. They've only been doing it for three months and, you know, look at how far that they've gone. And this isn't, this isn't me. I don't know. I guess you could call it jealousy if you want. I don't like to admit that, but I guess in a way it kind of is a little bit of jealousy that, but you need to realize that everybody is on their own journey and we all do things differently and we all have different audiences. Like what works for me is not going to work for Ari, especially since we write in uh, two different genres as well. Like we have totally different audiences and like, that's what, that's what I was talking about. You shouldn't compare yourself. You can't look at somebody else's journey and say, oh man, like I haven't reached that point yet. But you can look at some of your favorite authors or even, even your friends that you've met through the writing community on Twitter. You can look at what they're doing and just say, you know, wow, I really appreciate the way that they've been doing X, Y, and Z. I want to aspire to do that. I want to be on their level. I want people to look up to me, not to sound self-centered, but hopefully you got, hopefully, yeah. See, now here's the rambling. Here's the rambling. Ready, <laughs> mute. That is it exactly though. I think, I think when you compare yourself and you do it constructively, so you, you pick a really good author or someone that you, as you said, you look up to and you, you admire their work, whether it's their work ethic, their style, their skill, their ability, that's fine. As long as when you look at your own, you don't go, oh my God, it's so rubbish. I'm never going to be as good. Oh my God, I'm awful. Oh, I should just stop. I hate myself. That's not helpful. When you look up to someone and you have a bar set, it has to be, that's where I want to get to. How do I get to there? And then you put proactive actions in place. That is studying their work, studying their habits, studying what works for you figuring out your own weaknesses, analyzing your story for those weaknesses, figuring out whether you're really bad at description or dialogue or pacing or character development, not as a way to you know, bring yourself down and, and focus on the negative, but to do it constructively and kind of like, hmm, that needs fixing. I better fix that. I'm going to work on, on figuring out how to write better dialogue. I'm going to read articles on it. I'm going to speak to writers in the community who write really well and ask them how they did it or to get tips from them. I'm going to just write loads and loads of dialogue to get the practice. And then, as, you say, as Rachel said, there's the flip side where we look at the other people and we look at the, what they're doing, how they're doing it. And I think it might be a little bit of jealousy, but I don't think, I think you're right. I don't think jealousy is the right word. I think, I think it, it doesn't help that creative people are prone to self-doubt and self-depreciation and kind of sometimes see the worst in ourselves. And if you compare yourself to others, you can miss all the brilliant things that you're good at, all the advancement you've made from like five years ago, 10 years ago, two years ago, five months ago. And instead you're focused on one little thing and you can wrap yourself up in this negativity and that, and you don't know that that other person that you're like looking up going, oh, look how great they are and I'm not that good. They might be doing exactly the same about something totally different, looking at somebody else. So we could all be doing the same thing to each other, going, oh, I don't know how they manage it. I was like, I'm never going to manage it. It's awful. And that's so, there's no point. That doesn't do anything other than make ourselves feel bad. And I appreciate, I'm saying all that, as if I don't ever do that. And that I'm just like, yeah, it's fine. I only ever see the positive. That's not true. That is so not true. But you have to kind of catch yourself. And you have to kind of remind yourself not to do that. And not to focus on what they've managed because you just don't know I mean you know maybe they have no other um, responsibilities you know maybe they've got loads of responsibilities who knows but we don't know and you just can't you just can't measure yourself against people like that and I, as Rachel said that's easier said than done Rachel some tips <laughs> you're asking me <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the bottom line, though, as creatives, we are mean 
And I don't mean mean to each other. I mean, we're mean to ourselves. And we are harsh on ourselves. Like we are our own worst critics. And so when we see other people, you know, doing really well, that they're doing well from our perspective. Because one thing that we need to remember is that nobody is who they say they are through social media. You see a social media video or photo of somebody all smiles and they're like, oh my gosh, look at this great thing. I just have this book out, blah, blah, blah. And they're all, they look high and mighty because they're in front of the camera. And I'm not trying to say that people on social media are fake. That's not at all what I'm saying. But when that camera turns off, who knows what's going on in their life? They, you know, so we're comparing ourselves to these images and these videos that aren't necessarily 100% true or realistic. So, I mean, I think really the, the best advice that I could give here is um, just to have confidence in yourself. And as Ari said, you can compare yourself to other writers to a certain extent. You can look up to them and treat them as mentors to better your own skills but that doesn't mean you should lose the skills that you already have because we're all we're all fabulous writers we're all great creatives in our own way and you just need to you need to have the confidence to see that in yourself now i'm starting to sound like fortune cookie i like it <laughs> I think that's it though. It's like I've I've always had an issue where I've looked at other writers, especially as I've got older, and I look at some of the younger writers coming up, and they're like, "I've published five books," and it's like, "Are you kidding? You're like 22. How have you done that?" Now that's that's bad. That and that is that is a bad thing on my part, and I appreciate that, and I try not to do that. But again, it's it's it doesn't help. It does nothing but make me feel crap, and. It's something my grandma used to say, and I, I can't remember, but she used to say a lot of weird things. But one of the things she said, and I don't think it was anything referred to this, it was something totally different, but it was, we all have our own way up the mountain. And I like that because it's like, the idea is we're all trying to get to the top of the mountain. And some people have found a easy meandering path and other people have, you know, had lots of support getting up there. And then other people have found the worst, hardest part and are trying to, grapple their way up to the top and sometimes you don't even realize that you're in the hardest part or that you're on the easiest part not that I'm saying anyone's getting it hard or easy I'm just using a metaphor <laughs> is it a metaphor anyway <laughs> all right we don't know what metaphors are <laughs> but I like that because it kind of reminds you not to to, to focus so much on what anyone else is doing and their path because you've got your own in front of you and that's that's where you should be keeping your eyes focused you should be figuring it out and if you're really struggling if you're struggling with your marketing if you're struggling making book sales if you're struggling finishing your novel then talk to the community we're mostly okay you know we're most people if you reach out to them nicely friendly politely and ask for support within reason you know I, I do know some people who literally just like every day will send more and more stuff to people so just just don't overdo it but reach out to people do you see someone who writes really well do you see someone whose marketing is brilliant ask them see if they can help you see if they can give you some pointers maybe they'll give you the the books that they read that have helped them maybe they'll point you to websites that have you know given them ideas of how to structure their marketing the marketing plan you know it might be something you haven't come across you know i mean i've been i've been writing for years and i'm still coming across websites and articles and ideas and and software that have made things so much easier that i hadn't heard of and i've actually done that i, I appreciate i'm kind of going around in circles into something else but i've done it where i didn't want to write an article about a piece of software that i found really helpful because i kept thinking well it's probably just me being late to the party and everybody else will have known about this and then i did it anyway and the number of people that came out went oh i've never heard of this so it's like oh but of course they hadn't because i hadn't so i can't have been the only person in the whole universe who hadn't heard of this software and yes there were probably thousands of people who had but i reached people who hadn't we're all here to help each other out that's, I mean, that's the main thing. It's like, we talk about comparing ourselves to other writers, but 
we can do so in a manner that we're helping each other out. And because the thing is, you're comparing yourself to your favorite author who, you know, you look up to very much and you really love their style of writing and you like appreciate the business that they have built around their books. But meanwhile, you're over here working on your blog, working on your own novels and you're sending out newsletters. And there's going to be that one person out there that is like, wow, I really look up to Ari and I want to like, model my newsletter off of hers and I want to be doing what she's doing like she's she's awesome and she has so much good advice and that's what I want to be like so when you're comparing yourself to other writers you have to remember that other writers are comparing themselves to you too like you are not the only one who is just like I don't I don't know what the hell I'm doing none of us know what we're doing we're just taking it day by day and we're just floating through life trying to make the most of this and we're all writing because we enjoy writing. And I, I'm going to have to write down that mountain quote and print it out and stick it up on my wall because that is one of the most brilliant things I've ever heard. My, my grandma was good at pulling out like little like, witticisms like that. I don't know if that's the right word, but yeah, little, little phrases and sayings that kind of got you through. I have no idea what it was in reference to when she said it, but hey, it, it it's works. good for anything. <laughs> And by the way, is if there is someone who's looking at me going, wow, you do so well, please email because I would love to hear that. I could do with a boost right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm going to just throw in an extra thing that I've just thought of. You should compare yourself to writers. You. You should compare yourself to you. You should keep all the old crap you write in a folder and then every few years you should look back at that and and... You should look back on that and see how much you've grown. Because the problem with skill is it develops slowly. And, you know, it's it's a very slow climb and you don't always realise it. It's like the same with artists. I've seen some artists who draw incredibly, incredibly well, and they don't think they're that good. But then they'll show one of the, the drawings from 10 years ago and the difference is like a chasm. But they couldn't see it until they actually put the two pictures together because the tiny little increments of of advancement were so small, it didn't seem to be, it wasn't noticeable. And I think the same is with writing. It's almost harder with writing because we're very visual creatures. And I think seeing two pictures and seeing the difference is not the same as, as with, you know, you'd have to really read some scenes to really get a feel of it. And uh, maybe like, you know, if you're reading one that's got a lot of dialogue, you have to make sure you read another one with a lot of dialogue. So yeah, you should compare yourself to yourself and you shouldn't be hard on yourself, but you should look back at what you've written and see, oh my gosh, look how good I've got at this, you know? I mean, every now and then you'll look back and go, wow, that was a really good scene. I wish I could write like that now. But I guarantee that is very rare and it happens once in a blue moon it's not a big thing so mostly you will see an increase of ability and you know things like that so yeah look back at your own stuff if you need a boost that's always a good idea that's a really good thought and it's it's not something that i've necessarily thought about before and i do keep a lot of my old stuff and i do look back on it once in a while but i don't look at it as wow look at how much i've improved i look at it and say wow, I was a shitty writer. <laughs> like, <laughs> Straight for the negative. Oh. I told you, we are mean to ourselves. I mean, if anybody, anybody who listens to this podcast that also knows me like in real life or just through Twitter or anything like that, you guys all know I do not practice what I preach. <laughs> and maybe that's something that I got to start doing. <laughs> But it is, it is absolutely true that, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You should compare yourself to yourself and to see, because I think you mentioned it earlier, I don't know, like a few minutes ago in this episode that you can improve so much between a year, between two years, five years, or even just six months. Yeah. I think it, it's more about um, keeping an eye on the negative cycles, on the negative thoughts and constantly putting ourselves down by looking at somebody else. We shouldn't do that. We should appreciate what other people do. We should be able to look at them and say, wow, their marketing is super, or wow, the way they do their first page or their their first chapter in the hook really dragged me in. 
that shouldn't then turn around to be, I'm not that good and my marketing sucks. It should be opportunities to get better, not focusing on the negative. And yeah, it is hard, but I think if we just kind of try consciously catching ourselves, we might do better. We might move forward and we might not spiral like we do a lot. Just a thought. No, no, that's true. And honestly, I have no idea if this is this would work because I just had this thought just now. But you could probably try something new, whether it's a new marketing tactic or whatever. Obviously, when you do that, you want to write down what works and what doesn't. But even with your writing, when you're working on your novel and you're like writing a new chapter or you wrote a really cool piece of dialogue or description or something, make a note of it in the margins or keep a separate notebook like with your notes and just say you know the positives of that writing session just take a moment and appreciate what you wrote i also find it's helpful if you're dealing with a critique partner or a beta reader to have them pull out bits that they like because i think sometimes you can get tied up with with critique partners beta readers focusing on the issues and the errors and i think again it's, it's more negative. And again, we've talked about this before. Negative does not mean like nasty or mean or bad. It's just, you know, things that need to be fixed, things that have issues. But you should always try and see if someone can tell you the positive. You know, yes, they can find all the faults they want, but what did they really like? And then keep those notes. You know, you need those little positive points in your writing and in your life. And if you're a beta reader, put them in. You know, you don't have to just look for the bad things. Put in a little note. I really love this character. Or, wow, that ending was, like, so good. You know? Love that description. Little things. It honestly makes a big difference. Someone just saying, I really liked your story. And then listing a lot of faults. That is fine. Because that first line, that just gives you that little bit of a, ah, yay. So, yeah, it's, it's just sad that creative people are... Creative people have a tendency to lean towards a lot of the negative and to kind of get swept up in that. It's such a shame. And there's so much of it out there. So, like I always say, it's we're not competition. We should be community. We should support each other. I think we covered a lot in this episode, and I'm just going to leave you with Ari's last thoughts because I totally agree with it, and she said it pretty well. So we hope you guys enjoyed this episode and do let us know if you've ever compared yourself to another writer and how you got out of that comparison funk in the comments or on Twitter using the hashtag the Mary Writer Podcast. If you want to get some extra content, head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the Mary Writer Podcast. You can support our show and for as little as $1 a month, you can get extra bonus content. So tune in next week for another episode of the Mary Writer Podcast, where we ask all the right questions. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Scribbled Notes. Our handwriting is awful. The music titled Inspired is by Kevin McLeod, licensed under Creative Commons 4.0.